<laughs> okay, so when we're solving, we're still trying to isolate the variable, and in this case, it just happens to be inside the absolute value. So we're going to end up with the absolute value of x is less than 2. Again, what do we know about absolute values? They have to have two possible answers. What are the two possible answers for this? So x is less than 2 and x is less than negative 2. Or, oh wait, no, wrong, duh. With, yeah, but think about it. If I'm doing a negative, what's going to happen with the symbol? Keep changing. Keep changing. Don't forget. So this is an and, and so what's going to happen? The x is going to go in the middle. And this is how we would write the and. I get it now. <laughs> well, and think about it. Not yet. <laughs> but think about what we're doing with, to get that negative 2. It's like we're multiplying it by negative 1 to turn the 2 into a negative. When we multiply or divide by a negative, we flip our symbol. Then to put it into this, it has to go back to being flipped again. Yes. You would know when you graphed it. If you're not seeing it yet, you would just know it once you graph it. Does that make sense, you guys? No. Yeah. I was picturing in my head when I was pulling these out and realizing it was going to be an and. But if I go ahead and I graph it, I'll see that it's going to go between them instead of off in either direction, and the graph will help you tell. Because x is less than 2 and x is greater than negative 2. And that's when I knew that I needed to write it like this instead of an or. You're right. I did jump ahead on that, so thanks for asking the question. Let's try one that's a little bit more complex. x minus 1 inside the absolute value is less than or equal to 2. What happens with this? We're going to set this up as two different versions, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. X minus 1 is less than or equal to 2. And what's the other one? Negative 2. Negative 2. But what do you think is going to happen to the symbol? Blue. Blue. Yep. Okay. Because I'm basically taking the answer and multiplying it by negative 1 to get it to be a negative. And when I do that, I have to flip my symbol. I'm going to add 1 to this. And I get x is less than or equal to 3. And I'm going to start thinking about my graphing over here as I go. I'm going to add 1 to the other inequality, and I get x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So I get negative 1, positive 3. They're both going to be solid circles, right? Yes. Yeah. And which direction is the negative one going from? To the right. To the right, and the negative three or the positive three is to the left. So that's telling us that this is also an and. So I need to rewrite it with the negative one here. And the three here. Nick? Um wait, so I didn't really catch that. Why did you flip the symbol on the negative part? Because when I'm setting this up with a positive version, I keep the symbol the same. To set it up with a negative version, flip I'm flipping the symbol because I'm multiplying this by negative 1 to get that. Oh, okay, okay. I don't multiply the whole thing because I'm just testing what's in the absolute value. But to get a negative answer, I have to multiply this by negative 1, and that's going to flip the symbol. And then why did I flip it back? Because it, it stays with the X. Yeah, because the X was on the left side. Yeah. yeah, this flip here is because of a flip flop to get it away from order matters into the and. Wait, well, I'm so confused. Why did you multiply the one two? Because it's the absolute value, and we keep that the same. 
Remember when we were solving oh, the mini so equations? We didn't change the absolute value thing. We only changed the answer to a positive and a negative version. Okay. All right. Let's do a couple ors. Or. Or. Absolute value of x plus 14 is greater than or equal to 19. We're going to subtract the 14 from both sides. Absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 5. The positive version, the symbol's going to stay the same. The negative version, the symbol's going to flip. 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 So I get, I'm just going to write it up here so it's above the graph. x is greater than or equal to 5 x is less than or equal to negative 5. Can you picture what's going to happen with the line? Negative 5, positive 5. The positive 5 goes to the right, and the negative version goes to the left. So this is an or. Uh, or. I'm sure there's way more mathematical ways to make sure you know that this is an or, but again, I'll tell you over and over, I'm visual. Seeing it on the graph makes it really clear. Or. Right? Let's do a slightly more complex one. I am taking this from the or section, so I'll tell you right now it's an or, but let's work through it and see that we can see that it is, okay? Um, 3 plus the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than 5. First step is going to be minus 3. Absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than 2. I'm going to do a positive version and a negative version. x plus 2 is greater than 2. And x plus 2 is less than negative 2. I'm going to subtract the 2, and I get x is greater than 0. Subtract the 2, and I get x is less than negative 4. Well, you do that so much faster than what, drawing the line? Still like on the other one, you did the negative part too. Recall, I'm recording too, so you can go back and pause it if you want to go through it again. Okay. I heard somebody say it's confusing when we get a zero. Zero is just another number on the number line for absolute or for inequalities, right? Yes. So we're going to have a negative four, and we're going to have a zero as our two points. Open circle. Open circle for both of them. X is greater than zero, so when I circle this, my arrow is going to right, be right. right. And when I circle this one, it's going left, to the left. left. So now I know that this is an or, for sure, because I can see it on the graph. Tough mathematics. So we have a few problems to do out of 3-6. Yes. And that's on page 208. I'll write it down so you guys can see this in a sec. Page 208, numbers. 11 to 14, 24 to 27. These are eight problems where you are creating a, any, an inequality from a graph, like we practiced at the very beginning, okay? And then we're going to do some 3-7 work that we can check tomorrow, and it's going to put us in good shape to take the test on Tuesday. This is on page 215. Numbers 1 through 12. 20 to 31. It is quite a few problems because this is something you really need practice to be solid with. Okay, question? Yes. Yes. I don't know.